Hello everybody and welcome to Fedrin's Field Guide to Life in the Woods Renaissance. Today we're going to be covering how to make an atlas, which is absolutely imperative on any of your travels. Now making an atlas is easy, but it's absolutely incredibly important and definitely something you should consider, especially if you have a set base and you want to find your way back to it without using coordinates. So to make it you will need paper, burlap or leather, redstone, and four iron ingots. All you need to do is make a book, which most of you have done before. It takes three sugar cane, gives you three paper. Put the three paper vertically, and you need either burlap or a piece of leather. Either one works. It gives you a book, and then once you have the book, you need four iron ingots, like so, and one piece of redstone to give yourself a compass. And when you put the compass and the book side by side, it gives yourself an empty antique atlas. So that will give you an empty antique atlas. And once you right click, there'll be a picture on the front and it'll be called an antique atlas. And depending on how many atlases have been made in that current world so far, it'll be numbered. So the first one will be antique atlas zero, antique atlas one, antique atlas two. And the fun thing about atlases is you can actually make duplicates of the same one instead of just making a new atlas, which has no information in it so far. If you have one atlas, explore the world and then bring it back, you can actually make duplicates. And if you give other people those duplicates of the same atlas or take those duplicates with you, they'll actually fill in all of the versions of the same number of atlas. So it's especially important if you're on a server and you want to share where all of your builds are. If you want to show everybody, uh, like say, where your base is, you could have it marked on the map. And as you make those marks on the map, it actually shows up on everybody else's map if it's the same number. Let's take a look inside. So when you open up the Antique Atlas, it looks a little something like this. When you start off, it'll only have this one circle area here with all of the closest biomes to you. You can kind of tell the difference, um, but it doesn't specifically tell you what each of the biomes are. You can kind of start to understand some of the differences though. Like this looks like it could be, uh, well, definitely somewhere with sparse trees. I'm not entirely sure if that's a plains or a swamp, but obviously I'm in an area that's heavily wooded and these are all kind of lake areas. Now, what you can do is you can add markers, delete markers, and hide markers, which is very useful. You can also export the image uh, out of Minecraft so that you can open it up on your computer elsewhere or print it out. We're gonna add a marker, say this is my base, and I wanna put, uh, let's say, let's put this little house one here. And we're gonna say that this is Fedrin's Field Guide workshop. So there we go. Done. Now if you mouse over, it says Fedrin's Field Guide Workshop, and there's a little house there. You can also zoom in and zoom out. Once you start exploring more parts of the world, obviously this will fill in a lot more around you. And depending on if there are a lot of builds, you might want to hide the markers, which also hides your pointer, um, just so that you can see better the map and what else is going on there. Obviously, if you don't want that marker anymore, you can just delete it. But incredibly useful, incredibly helpful, especially if you like to get lost in the woods like I do. So there you have it. That's how you make and use the Antique Atlas. I think it's just necessary for any travelers and really fun to use. What do you think? What's your favorite part of the Antique Atlas? Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed and I hope you'll join me next time for the next Field Guide episode.